Hello, welcome once again to the Daily Fantasy Whiff. I am Big Italy 42. He's Josh Shepardson at Beachhead 50. We're talking about fades and stacks here, which teams you want to fade, which teams you are stacking, and then some little in between, some mini stacks, some teams who have some guys you want, but maybe not an entire offense you want to target. And we'll go game by game here, give you the odds and everything. So starting off, Colorado at Washington. This one, Eddie Butler against Steven Strasburg. So you got, well, I, I'll say at times, both these guys have been punching bags. But uh, Steven Strasburg, minus 200 favorite, eight run total here. Obviously, some runs expected to be scored here. Strasburg coming off of his final uh, minor league performance where he struck out 11 of the 21 batters he faced. So we know the upside's there with Strasburg. We know the consistency has not been there. But at, due to his price tag and the fact that the Rockies are just god-awful on the road, I'm not stacking the Rockies, and I think that you're with me there as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of using Strasburg. Uh, I do not like the idea of using the bats in the Rockies lineup against Strasburg, even though he has been inconsistent. We've seen him leave starts early due to injury. We've seen him be ineffective. Um, there, uh, that that lineup just does not look the same without Troy Tulowitzki. Corey Dickerson's on the DL again. And uh, it's funny how they just don't quite hit the same outside of the thin air at Colorado. So uh, I think you use Strasburg. I think you uh, fade the... Uh, the, the lineup there for the Rockies, but you certainly don't fade the lineup for the Washington Nationals. Um, maybe this isn't quite a David versus Goliath matchup, but uh, Eddie Butler is something other than a giant. We know he's uh, been getting pummeled by lefties, been getting pummeled by righties, and uh, he's probably thrilled to not be at Coors Field today. But it's not going to matter. He's been getting knocked around by everyone. And the Nationals do have some some very interesting bats. We, we like guys like Anthony Rendon. Bryce Harper, that guy's pretty pretty okay at baseball from what I understand. Yep. Um, and even some of their, their non-flashy names. Yunel Escobar gets to lead off. Um, on DraftKings, you can use him at shortstop, which is a nice position to fill with him. Definitely. Um, You've got guys like Wilson Ramos who have some power. Fill up another position that's not exactly loaded with talent tonight. Uh, a lot of things you can you like about this Nationals stack, and uh, a lot of things that a lot of people are going to like about the Washington Nationals stack. So you might have to get a little bit creative tonight if you want to be different. I do expect it to be one of the more popular stacks. Uh, something I had said uh, prior. To, to recording the podcast when you did a little bit of prep. Uh, maybe one way to go about getting a unique stack is dropping Bryce Harper, which sounds crazy. Uh, I certainly want to use a lot of Harper tonight, but uh, maybe swap in Mike Trout for Bryce Harper. Hope that Trout outscores him and you still get some of the benefits of the rest of that national stack. Maybe stick a different part of the order. Maybe grab two mini stacks. Grab a mini stack at the top and a mini stack near the bottom of the order because you do have guys like... Uh, Desmond and Ramos, who are not hitting it in the uh, top top five lineup spots, so maybe grab some stacks and, and leave some guys out. But uh, this is one that we do expect to be popular, but popular for good reason tonight. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think that's a very unique way to go about it. Um, I, you mentioned that, so I will definitely be doing that at least one. So we'll we'll see where our lineups differ in uh, in, in said tournament, but it'll it'll be a fun a fun night to do that with because, like you said, all these Washington guys in play. Um, Boston at Detroit, Alfredo Simon versus Wade Miley. That sounds like a recipe for stacks, if you ask me. And you're looking at this one here. It's got a nice, nice, healthy total of nine runs. Alfredo Simon, uh, the favorite by default at minus 115, really just because he's at home, it seems like. Yep. Uh, tw- it says 20% chance of showers and doesn't look like any concerns here. The concern here is maybe not having enough exposure to this game because Wade Miley, a lefty, we know some of these Tigers – righties actually haven't hit lefties nearly as well as you'd like they do strike out a lot against lefties but unfortunately for wade miley he doesn't strike out a lot of batters ever so what i'm doing here is i'm looking to try to target the cheap batters i mean you could play james mccann and uh victor martinez both guys obviously catcher eligible on FanDuel, but both guys under 3k both guys killing left-handed pitching this year victor martinez obviously the much longer track record there but um this is a very viable stack on both sides we mentioned on the FanDuel podcast, you think that David Ortiz will be a popular play. All the lefties from, uh, well, the few lefties, I should say, from Boston against Alfredo Simon. So this seems like a viable stack on both sides, obviously, with the highest total on the night. Yeah, we may not need rain for thunder in this contest, if you catch my drift. Yep. Uh, I do like both sides of this. I think uh, 
uh, Ian Kinsler should be a popular name at second base tonight. He's been hitting third for the uh, Tigers. I think the most popular stacks are probably going to include him, Victor Martinez, and J.D. Martinez all in play. Uh, I don't mind that little threesome if you don't want to go for the full-blown Tigers stack. Uh, on the Red Sox side of things, you mentioned Brock Holt is a cheap option. I do like his name a lot. Uh, assuming he gets a decent lineup spot, we'll, we'll see. Um, but this is this is an interesting uh, game in terms of I, I, I think that that high total is going to grab some, some people in and have them grabbing some one-offs from this game, but I'm not necessarily thinking that, that the masses are going to be flocking to stack this game, which if either of these offenses goes off, which they're more than capable of doing against a couple of pitchers who has some gas can tendencies, uh, you got a chance to get paid. So I do like I do like both sides of the stack quite a bit, I, I and I do like some mini stacks in it as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely with you there. And then uh, next up, we've got the White Sox at the Kansas City Royals. Jeff Samarja, Jeremy Guthrie. We all know the story with Jeremy Guthrie, which is why this is an eight-run total. We got uh, essentially a pick em, small favor for Jeff Samarja. And uh, looks like wind blowing uh, right to left, so nothing significant there. Jeremy Guthrie is terrible against left-handed batters, in case you didn't know. 406 Woba, 13 home runs already this season. 744 ERA. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of left-handed bats in this game that you want to get. I mean, we've got Melky Cabrera, who's been hitting the ball pretty well, but he's pretty expensive on both sides. Adam Eaton left last night's game. They said he injured his shoulder. It doesn't seem to me like he'll be playing tonight. So um, Adam LaRoche, a guy who's been very inconsistent. He did homer last night. Really cheap on both sides. So for me, I want to be able to get some exposure to Jeremy Guthrie where I can, but it's going to be tough to go full-blown stack. So I think this is going to be a mini-stack kind of situation. Yep. Um, on the White Sox side. Yeah, let's see uh, how Robin Ventura arranges his left-handed bats and uh, maybe pick a handful of lefties that are grouped together in that lineup against Guthrie because he is just so terrible against lefties. But I'm with you, not a lineup. And, and in addition to not being a lineup that has a lot of length, you've also got two first basemen, basically. I mean, Jose Abreu, you can't play him and LaRoche on, on your rosters together on either Draft uh, Kings or FanDuel. Okay. So that kind of takes a bite out of the... Uh, the full-blown stack, but so many stacks are definitely in play. Um, Shark, now missing a lot of bats. The Royals make a lot of contact. There is some viability, I think, to stacking them. But again, not one that I want to go full-blown stack with because it's another double first baseman issue. Um, two yep. of your better hitters in this in this game, uh, the lefties that you want to attack Jeff Samarja with, are Kendrys Morales and, and Eric Cosmer. So it's tough to really love a full-blown stack when you have to drop one of your heart-of-the-order bats because you can't play them at the same position. Um, but I do think uh, mini-stacking, maybe Zobrist, Kane, and either Hosmer or Kendrys Morales comes into play. Uh, you can play Alcides Escobar because shortstop does stink tonight. He is cheap on uh, FanDuel, so maybe you can go a four-person stack if you'd like. Um, but beyond that, I wouldn't go crazy. Mike Moustakas has been struggling in the second half, so he's not a left-handed bat that you love anymore. Uh, Salvador Perez going to be putting a tough righty-righty situation with Jeff Samarja, so, so another name that I'm not terribly enamored with. So... Uh, many stacks in this game, I think, is the way to go. Yep, completely agree with you there. Minnesota at Cleveland, Trevor Bauer against Irvin Santana. And both these guys we've seen be very good, but we've also seen both guys be very bad at times. So with that being said, though, it's only a 7.5 run total. Trevor Bauer minus 130 favorite. Wind is blowing in. I think that's part of the reason why it's a lower total. I believe, what was it, 19 runs scored last night in Cleveland. Certainly aren't expecting that again tonight. But, uh... There are some viable options here. Trevor Bauer, as we know, he's he's certainly a GVP option in himself. We know he has big-time strikeout upside when he gets it going. Um, went complete game two games ago, had nine strikeouts the game before that. So he certainly has upside, but he's also very volatile because he does walk way too many batters, 9.6%. Um, so with that being said, I'm looking at Minnesota bats. Most of them are fairly cheap. Um, you get guys like uh, Brian Dozier, tons of power against righties. Miguel Sano with a ton of power against righties. Um, outfielders, obviously you've got your your old man, Torrey Hunter. He's only $2,700 coming off a huge performance last night. Somehow just keeps chugging along. So I think either side a viable stack, but more so for me if I'm playing a lot of lineups. If I'm playing like three to four yes. lineups, I won't be stacking either of these teams. But if you're stacking, you know, eight, ten lineups, I, I'll definitely have one of each. 
Yeah, and uh, you got to like the power at uh, up the middle with with Dozier, as you mentioned. Uh, not a not a position you typically get a lot of power from. Uh, second base not exactly loaded tonight, so um, you get yourself a stack with him and Sunil. Both go deep, and all of a sudden that stack pays off pretty pretty handsomely. Um, but a- as you also know, Trevor Bauer can be brilliant when he's locked in. So not a stack that is near the top of my stacking priority list, but definitely one that's in play. And uh, Indians, I mean, Irvin Santana missed most of the season due to suspension. They do have some interesting left-handed bats still in that lineup, namely Michael Brantley. But they also don't have Jason Kipnis, which hurts their stack viability. But um, uh, maybe you hook a couple of these these bats together. Maybe you're Brantley and Santana's. But uh, I don't I don't think I'll go full blown stack with the Indians. And if I'm picking one stack of the two, I'd rather have the Twins than the uh, than the Indians tonight. And even though they have a tougher matchup, I would say Bauer's the better pitcher than Santana at this point in both pitchers' careers. But uh, there's a little bit more thump on that Minnesota side of things, or at least a part of the lineup that you would stack for Minnesota. Yeah, absolutely there is. And then uh, your our next game up, Miami and Atlanta. You know the drill before we even go here. Seven and a half run total. Once again, marginal favorite for Tom Kohler against Mike Fultonwitz. Both offenses are bad right now. Mike Fultonwitz, though, does have significant splits against lefties, allowing a 422 Woba this year. So you want to look at these lefty bats. Your Christian Yelich, your D. Gordon, Derek Dietrich, and uh, even Justin Bohr. You mentioned before the show, I mean, you could stack all four of these guys for really cheap on both sites and then kind of maybe fill them in with your favorite full stack. Um, on the other side, but Atlanta is a complete avoid for me, and I think Miami is just just many stacks because I both these offenses are so bad. I mean, I'm not saying either. Obviously, no major league baseball team is incapable of putting up big runs, but I certainly don't expect it from either either side. Yeah, nor do odds makers. I mean, as you mentioned, the total is not exactly high for a couple of pitchers that under against normal uh, talented offenses, you'd have a higher total. Um, yep. It's just not there. Uh, I do think Fulton Witz is an interesting GPP play, uh, namely on FanDuel where he's fifty nine hundred dollars. Um, also a very cheap SP two on on DraftKings, but uh, gonna have to navigate the lefties. But we did see a couple starts ago. He was brilliant. Uh, on July 29th against the Orioles, struck out eight in six innings, only allowed eight base runners. Uh, it was worth 12 fan duel points. You, you'll take that every day, um, especially at 5,900. And with that low over-under total, like I said, I think he's at least interesting. Not a guy that you want to go crazy rostering in GPPs, but what he can allow you to do with the bats is, is, is something special. And oddsmakers put that low total on this game for a reason. So I don't mind that, but I also don't mind many stacking some of those left-handed bats. Uh, either. Uh, again, not something I have strong convictions about on either side of it, but uh, definitely something that if you're playing a high volume, it, it's not. It's always good to get a little bit of exposure to some of these uh, potential gas cans or these potential, uh, potential, potentially good starts. Uh, Fulton Woods is kind of a Jekyll and Hyde story right now, so um, I, there's definitely an argument to be made for both sides of that coin. Yeah, and they'll, cer- they'll certainly be coming at a low ownership tonight as well because, as we know, neither offense is very daunting. Um, St. Louis at Milwaukee, our next game. Seven and a half run total, another low one here. Jaime Garcia against Wiley Peralta. And interesting thing here is, once again, we get one of the pitchers. I mean, we got a lot of pitchers on the board tonight that are terrible against lefties. Wiley Peralta, another one of them. Add him to the list. 382 Woba allowed this season, and this isn't a fluke. This is a guy who's always struggled with left-handed batters. Fortunately for St. Louis and for DFS purposes, there's a lot of good left-handed bats on the St. Louis side. you got Matt Carpenter. You've got Jason Hayward, Colton Wong. Lots of guys that you want to be targeting, even Brandon Moss for your tournaments. Yep. Um, a lot of these guys you really want to be looking at here, and despite this being a low total, certainly the St. Louis lefties are a viable stack. I'd even maybe throw Randall Grichuk in there, too, because he's got a lot of power despite being a righty. Um, and on the Milwaukee side, we've got some guys that hit lefties really well. Jonathan Lucroy, Ryan Braun, even Chris Davis. Not so much this year, but uh, did have two homer game a couple games ago. And we said on the FanDuel podcast, Jaime Garcia is a fine pitcher, but not a guy that's going to maintain his current numbers. No, and uh, Miller Park is just such a good offensive venue. Uh, I, I like both offenses in this tonight. I'm a little surprised by the lowish total. I think that they do exceed that tonight, which means that for DFS purposes, you got to like uh, like both offenses. I think stacking the top of the orders is uh, is a good way to get some exposure to this game. Uh, the bottom of each order is uh, problematic. There there aren't a lot of uh, talented hitters, namely in the Milwaukee lineup. That since it has been I won't say gutted, but they dealt two 
key pieces in Gerardo Parra and Carlos Gomez at the trade deadline. So they definitely did take a bite out of their own yeah. offense. But uh, I do like the top of it. Uh, Luke Croy, Braun, and Davis maybe hook the three of those guys together in a mini stack. Uh, the lefties in the, the Cardinals lineup look pretty good, uh, as you mentioned. And then most of them hit at the top of the order. you got Matt Carpenter, Colton Wong, and... Uh, Jason Hayward all hitting within the first four spots in the lineup. And then, as you said, you could drop in Gritchick for power, but you can also drop in Johnny Peralta to fill a bad shortstop position and uh, get, get a guy that, that is above an above-average hitter against right-handed pitchers, the same-handed foes. So uh, I, I do like uh, that stack quite a bit. Yep, I'm with you there. And then uh, next up, Cincinnati at Arizona. This one was a big disappointment for those of us looking for a big game in Chase Field last night. 2 nothing final. But as you can see by the salaries here, neither one of these pitchers – guy you want to avoid Robbie Ray against Kavius Sampson I believe it is is that right uh Kivas I think I don't know Kivas, I, okay that, that sounds better anyway so we'll go with that eight and a <laughs> half run total Robbie Ray minus 140 favorites um obviously this one in the heat but there's a there's a roof of course to Chase Field Vegas expecting this one to be one of the higher scoring games and we tend to agree we already mentioned on the FanDuel podcast Paul Goldschmidt is uh, a travesty of a price at four thousand dollars get him in where you can Another guy who's hitting the ball really well. Better against lefties than righties, but Wellington Castillo just continues to rake. He's got, in his last 10 games, seven home runs. So, I don't know. Maybe you're confused by the price. Certainly not if you're paying attention to what he's doing. He's crushing the ball. So, both sides of this viable. I mean, the Reds, one of their, their best hitter, of course, Joey Votto, actually hits lefties pretty well. So, you got to like Votto. you got to like other guys. Brandon Phillips at the top of the order hits lefties pretty well. We know Todd Frazier has a ton of power against lefties. And then even the Arizona outfield, you got um, guys like David Peralta, Andrew Enciarte, and of course David Paul or not David Pollock, uh, AJ Pollock, who can uh, really do it all. Yeah, and uh, the the thing that could get Samson into some trouble, and we discussed it uh, in show prep, is that uh, Samson has some walk issues in the minor leagues. If he struggles with his control today, plus some batters on, all of a sudden that's a recipe for a. Uh, three-run shot from Paul Goldschmidt and some points for everybody involved there. Um, and, and Ray uh, has pitched well, but his ERA estimators do suggest that he's due for some more regression. Uh, there are some lefty mashers in that, that Reds lineup, uh, namely Todd Frazier and Marlon Byrd. But uh, Joey Votto does work against lefties. We like Phillips at the top of that order. Uh, wraparound stack is, is is definitely viable with Billy Hamilton frequently hitting ninth behind the pitcher. So you can uh, maybe do that wraparound if you're looking for five to six batters to get that full DraftKings stack. Uh, can definitely do that with this Reds lineup. It's something that I think is, uh, is in play. And I like the Reds stack a little bit better than the... Uh, Diamondback side of things, but love Chase Field, love the offenses, and a couple of pitchers that I think are, are certainly exploitable with, with some of these bats. So th those are a couple stacks that I like quite a bit. Yeah, they certainly are. And then moving over to San Diego where it tends to be a pitcher's park, but um, seven run total, Tyson Ross is a minus 200 favorite, rightfully so against Adam Morgan. Two of the much more maligned offenses in all of baseball, guys that we go out of our way to pick on. So for that reason alone, you tend to think they'll have low ownership. Uh, Philly, a team that's been hitting much better. San Diego, not so much. They had that big ex explosion a couple days ago. But I actually really like a lot of these San Diego bats. Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, especially Upton on FanDuel where he's crazy cheap tonight. I like them. Got to like Derek Norris, who we know crushes lefties. He's near men's salary on FanDuel as well. So for me, still not going full-blown stack. Because uh, although Adam Morgan is awful, I do like the San Diego side. And Philly, I mean, you can look at some pieces. Really not a team that I'm going out of my way to stack because Tyson Ross is a very good pitcher. Doesn't allow a lot of home runs. In fact, one of the better in all of baseball at home run rate. But um, they do have some big bats that have been producing. And if he does have a weakness, it's with walks and with left-handed batters. So some guys like my my favorite, Dom Brown, are in play for me in tournaments tonight. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I don't think that, that I see a full Philly stack worth worth um, grabbing, even with them hitting better out of the break. But they do have a few interesting pieces. Um, some of these lefties uh, do make for, for a good get against Tyson Ross. Uh, Depending on who's in the lineup, obviously Chase Utley's back. He bumped Cesar Hernandez to the bench yesterday. But um, the righties that you named from the uh, the the Padres make for a nice little uh, three three person mini stack, uh, especially if they're slotted where I expect them to be. Maybe Norris hitting second, uh, Kemp and Upton filling in the uh, three and four spots in that lineup. You got a nice little two through four mini stack 
with with some guys who hit left-handed pitching well. And Adam Morgan, really bad against right-handed batters. Uh, since 2013, he's allowed a 383 WOBA to uh, the right-handed batters that he's faced. All uh, I'm sorry, all. Uh, 128 of them so it's not exactly a huge sample size but it's not tiny at this point either um so you got to like the power speed combination especially the power from from guys like upton and kemp and norris uh kemp not what he was but uh can still put a charge into a mistake and and upton uh as you mentioned uh grossly underpriced on FanDuel, but uh he also has some speed in, that he's been flashing this year not not something you're typical, uh, typically used to seeing from him, but he's stolen 18 bases this year, so don't, don't lie to that either. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a big fan of his. Uh, and last game of the night, we tend to think the chalk pitcher, Garrett Richards, against Ubaldo Jimenez. This game, obviously, at Angel Stadium, where not known for offense, and Vegas agrees, of course, once again. Just a seven-run total. Richards, of course, minus 150 favorite here. And I think the Baltimore stack is viable for one reason alone, really. Uh, well, two reasons. They do have a lot of upside. They've got a lot of very good bats there. Uh, they also strike out a lot. But because Richards is going to be a popular play tonight, I think that you know if we get messy Garrett Richards, which we haven't seen over the past few starts, but Baltimore certainly going to be at a low ownership. And, I mean, they, they're more than capable of putting up big runs. I don't expect it tonight. But at a low ownership, I don't think that's a bad way to go if you're playing multiple lineups. No, and uh, something I think that's worth mentioning is um, if you're going to do a contrarian stack, it's it's always kind of nice to do it with a talented offense. And guys like Manny Machado, Adam Jones, and Chris Davis certainly qualify as talented offensive performers. So um, if you're sticking in just a handful of stacks, this isn't one that I would be going out of my way to, to grab. But as you said, there should be low ownership because Garrett Richards is the chalk play. Plus, talent, man. Talent that can reach the seats. Yep. Powerful talent in Chris Davis, Jones, and Machado. Um and, I mean, it would be nice if Weeders is in the lineup. He was in the lineup last night, so I'm guessing he probably gets a night off. Maybe he DHs, though. We'll see. Uh, he'd be another powerful bat if he is in the lineup, though. So um, it's it's not my favorite stack of the night because they are facing the chalk, but from a game theory standpoint, it's a pretty good one. Yep, absolutely. And then, uh, you know, the Angels, of course, never really a full-blown <laughs> stack. But you, you, if you get Mike Trout in your lineup, you get a guy hitting ahead of him and a guy hitting behind him. That's a nice mini stack regardless of who yeah. the other hitters are. One of them just happens to be Albert Pujols, and those two teammates have more home runs than any other duo in Major League Baseball. Uh, Pujols has been struggling a little bit recently. Um, as far as an everyday play, he hasn't been bad on the field, but for DFS purposes, hasn't been worth his salary in, in a little over a week here. But certainly at his depressed price tag, that's a, a nice mini stack tonight as well. Yeah, and speaking of struggling lately, that would apply to Ubaldo Jimenez, who's pitched less than five innings in three of his last four starts. Um, it looks like the real Ubaldo has decided to stand up and, and show himself here. So uh, definitely like that mini stack from the Angels. Yep, absolutely on board with you there. And that's going to wrap things up. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check out all of our great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.